After three months of hard work, my zombie containment unit is finally finished. One thing that I did differently than some of the other zombie containment units out there is I'm using a push button rather than a motion detector to start the show. So let's push this big red button and see what happens. Come back in about 90 seconds and I'll show you some of the details of how I put this thing together. In the meantime, enjoy the show. Okay, hopefully that'll creep out at least a few people this Halloween. Now let's take a closer look at how it's built. My zombie containment unit is built from a frame and a skin. Because I have to be able to move this from the basement up to the garage and disassemble and reassemble it, I built the frame out of 80-20 aluminum extrusions, and then bolted to the frame is the skin. The skin is built from quarter inch sheets of plywood. To give the zombie containment unit some character and some depth, I put some 3 quarter inch by 1 and a half inch trim pieces around the edges. Finally, the panels and trim pieces are connected to the frame using some screws and some drop-in T-nuts. The screws and drop-in T-nuts allow the zombie containment unit to be disassembled into pieces to make it easier to carry up and down the stairs to the basement. Up next was to cut a hole for the main monitor. I cut this with my circular saw, then framed it out with more trim pieces. To give it even more visual interest, I stuck some half inch long by half inch bolts through the trim pieces. These are purely decorative. They don't really hold anything together. They're just there for looks. And here's a picture of me doing my best zombie impersonation. The main monitor is an old 27 inch monitor I had lying around the house. It's held in place using more aluminum extrusions. Below the main monitor is a small seven inch display and two control panels. Separating these items are some rack handles. The small display is held in place using some 3D printed brackets. These 3D printed brackets bolt to the plywood behind the monitor. Then the monitor slides into the space between the brackets and is secured using some 1 quarter 20 bolts that go into the threaded holes on the side of the monitor. The left control panel is the experiment control panel. This panel has a key switch and a button that don't do anything, a blinking red LED danger light, and then some 3D printed LED bar graph displays. To give the panel some added depth, I 3D printed a 15 millimeter deep collar that mounts between the skin of the zombie containment unit and the panel. There's a blog post on how to build these 3D printed LED bar graph displays on my blog. The link is under the video description. The right control panel is a containment status panel. This panel has an Allen Bradley cluster pilot light that's been modified to use low voltage LEDs instead of the normal bulbs and transformer arrangement that run off of 120 volts. I have a blog post on how to modify these lights to use LEDs if you're interested. To the right of the cluster pilot light is a purge button it looks cool, but it doesn't do anything. Okay, let's move on to the pneumatics. On either side of the zombie containment unit are two small panels that pop out. On this panel is an industrial pilot light for some visual interest and a bunch of electrical parts from the local big box hardware store. These are mounted to some wood blocks and the wood blocks connect to the air cylinders. Inside the zombie containment unit are the pneumatic cylinder and pneumatic valve. These are mounted to more extrusion. The end of the cylinder connects to the wood block on the exterior of the zombie containment unit. Dangling down from each of these pop-out sections is a sump pump hose. The sump pump hose connects to the front of the zombie containment unit. To the side of each hose is another LED bar graph. Every time the zombie hits the side of the container, the bar graphs go into the red. The final piece is the pneumatics. 
are a filter, an oiler, a regulator, and a shot-off valve. These are mounted on the bottom left on the outside of the zombie containment unit because they look way too cool to have hidden on the inside. The last of the decorations are two red LED industrial beacons that flash when containment's been breached and the zombie's about to escape. Let's move on to the inside. It's a bit of a mess, but I have it divided up into two main sections. Up top is the media control section with the media players, and down below is the prop control with all the relays and transistors and switches that control the prop. On the top media control portion are two sprite media players, a power supply, an audio mixer, and then a media control board I built. This media control board responds to the start button and keeps the two media players in sync. It also sends a start signal to the prop control board down below. This lets the prop control board software know when the show is running. Down below is the prop control board. The prop control board is a Digilent Zybo FPGA board. On the FPGA board is a Xilinx Zinc 7000 series FPGA. This FPGA is kind of cool because in addition to having the normal programmable gates, it also has two embedded ARM Cortex-A9 cores. My zombie containment unit takes advantage of this split personality. Embedded in the right audio channel of the main zombie video are touch tones, just like a telephone makes. These tones keep the prop in perfect synchronization to the video and the main audio track. But to use them, the prop controller needs a touch tone decoder. I built this out of gates inside the FPGA. Every time a tone is received, it sends a signal to the ARM cores. Then the software in the ARM cores fires a pneumatic cylinder, blinks an LED, or updates one of the bar graphs in response to those tones. Connected to the Zybo FPGA board are a bunch of smaller boards that I built. These boards interface the various voltage levels required by the different components in this prop to the 3.3 volt outputs on the FPGA board. Finally, about that start button. It's just an ordinary arcade button, but I cut a biohazard sticker out of vinyl took the button apart, and stuck the vinyl sticker to the inside of the button. I then put everything back together again, and that's my start button. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking through to the end of the video. I hope you liked it, and I hope that it inspires you to build some great props for this Halloween.